gonna start with this friend that I have he doesn't keep secrets and he doesn't make plans if his brain has a thought he will pack up and go and that's what I admire most I know a girl with the most beautiful frame but she wants no recognition and she's not seeking fame She could open a smile that would wake up the dead But she won't let it go to her head Before Somewhere Between You and the Stereo, I was in a punk band when I was about 15, 16 um, into bands like Blink-182 and you know all the, all the sort of generic bands that you're in when you start playing guitar and after that I went straight from there, that sort of disbanded and I went from there to a metal band with um, four other people so when I was songwriting I was writing sort of for them as well so with lyrics and melodies and stuff I had to sort of incorporate that into what they wanted in the band as well. So I started somewhere because I wanted to see what it'd be like on my own and the only really that really the only, the only way you can start a band on your own is by having an acoustic guitar. And I loved all the acoustic sounds anyway that I found. When I was listening to a lot of, a lot of punk albums, I realised that the songs I, I most liked are the ones uh, were, that were sort of the slowest ones that had more meaning to them. Um, so I kind of felt like I wanted to write songs like that. So yeah, I, um, I wrote a few songs, got them together, um, they were sort of they were heavily influenced by bands that I was into. Um, a band called The Early November, who I'm really influenced by. It, they were really heavily influenced by that, so they just sounded like an English version of that, really. And I played an open mic night uh, just to like five friends and you know the person beyond the bar, really. That was that was all that was there. And I quite enjoyed sort of being not centre of attention as such, but I quite enjoyed that people liked my music because. Uh, people liked my music after I wrote it. After I wrote everything, so it's 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 great being in a band and saying people come up to you saying, "Oh, yeah, this song's really good and stuff." But you kind of think, "Yeah, they are good," but you know, I didn't write. I only wrote a third of it, or I only wrote a fifth of that song. I didn't write the whole thing. With regards to production, I um, I started off. Like, like everyone starts off really just you, you find some some way of recording a, a lick down or a chord progression and then like I had um, I actually used my phone to record stuff onto just ideas and stuff and then I bought a what's called a boss it's just like a boss digi digital four track recorder I bought one of them and then that was li it's literally plug in play record there's no EQ nothing like that it's just to get ideas down and then I kind of found that I quite liked um, doing little things like panning and just little ideas that, like, you, do, you, you wouldn't write, but you only write them in the studio. So when, when, you, when you listen to the song back in the studio, you think, oh, I could do with that. And I quite like the idea of doing that. And I, I, liked, I liked doing it all myself, which helped as well, because it means, you know, you've got no one else there to say that's wrong or whatever. Um, yeah, and then I sort of just expanded on, on that really. When I got a better computer, I bought Pro Tools. Um, and then I started recording, just doing my own little jingles and things like that. And then I decided that I really liked um, EQ. Yeah, EQ is the best thing in the world. <laughs> it makes your guitar sound amazing. Um, so yeah, I quite liked having that idea, having the idea of writing and producing my own songs completely. And we got out at Waterloo Station and walked down the tubeway stairs. There's a busker playing guitar down here, I wonder how long he's been there. 
At least he makes the effort Unlike some other bands I know Who sit there on their asses Playing the same old hometown shows I want to start a revolution With this guitar strung in my hands I've got a song called Guitar Strung Revolution And um that's a, that's about if you if you want something in life just do it you know don't be afraid of anyone saying oh that's a bit stupid or something because you know you know again you're not going to get anywhere I saw a um a busker in London and um, I was looking at him thinking you know he he must come down here every day and you know play the same old songs for you know whatever money he's got but you know he he enjoys it there's people there's uh, people from my hometown who they play the same gig venues like every week and it's like that, that's great and all but you know you've got to push yourself out there you've got to really sort of push yourself really in life needs a middle and a start just hassle at promoters and don't leave venues alone and keep at it until you get a set at one of their shows I want to start a revolution with this guitar strung in my hands I don't have any knowledge and I don't really have a plan I want to push my music out there, don't really care for being famous And it's safe to write the bands that do are talentless and shameless I've done my own Somewhere Between Here and the Stereo album as well That was all done in my room, like the artwork was done by my friend Elliot And then he just gave me, he just literally gave me the bit of paper I had to scan it in and then I printed them all out in my bedroom. Um, I've also done like a couple of EPs myself and I've been mixing some Rupture Farm stuff. I'm in a band called Rupture Farms and um, I've been mixing some of their stuff. We record it somewhere else and then we just get the master files and I just mix it in my room. With my album, I, um, I, I originally was going to record it on that four track that I told you about and then I kind of because I, I quite like the raw feel of a CD when, like, I quite like all the little mistakes and, you know, clips and things like that. Because that kind of gives it a sense of authenticity then. You don't get that clean, you know, too clean sound on the, on the, on the CD. So, but um, with the four track, I, I wanted to sort of use more than four tracks. I wanted to have, you know, different guitars and things like that. So I decided just to... Um, to buy Pro Tools and basically I bought Pro Tools and a home studio set up and um, studio monitors and I got, I used one mic for the whole of the Somewhere album I think. I just used the Rode NT1 microphone for everything. And uh, it, sound, it sounds, sounds fine, I'm, I'm happy with the sound and yeah, hopefully a lot of people are. <laughs>